Hello good chess to everybody before anything else. Please subscribe more videos. Thank you. Why chess grandmaster went mad? Crazy. The top 5 strong chess grandmasters from genius to madness. Carlos Torre Repetto One of the best chess players from south of the Rio Grande, Carlos Torre Repetto was also mentally ill. Born in 1905 and dying in 1978, Torre Repetto had a whirlwind career and made a name for himself by defeating then-world champion Emmanuel Lasker in the 1925 Moscow International Tournament. His other accomplishments were inventing the Mexican defense, the Torre attack, and being awarded the Grand Master title in 1977. However, he only played professionally between the years 1924-26 before going nuts. It seems Torre Repetto suffered a mental breakdown because of a combination of losing a game to Edward Lasker distantly related to Emmanuel, and being jilted by his bitchy fiancé, and never played chess again. While in New York City, he took off all of his clothes after getting on a bus and later hospitalized. Something snapped in poor Carlos, and he was never the same again. Akiba Rubinstein This Polish grandmaster, who lived between 1882 and 1961, abandoned at an early age his family's plans for him to become a rabbi and chose to play chess full-time instead. After learning to play at the age of 16, Rubinstein became a mainstead on the world chess scene in 1912 after winning five major tournaments in a year. For the following couple of decades he remained a very strong player, many considered him for a time better than world champion Emmanuel Lasker. He was well known for being a talented endgame player. However, our man Rubinstein, who started going off the deep end in the 1920s, quit playing tournaments altogether in 1932 because he started to go crazy. He began demonstrating such a profound fear of people and society, known as anthropophobia, that when the Nazis came to haul him off to a concentration camp during World War II because of his Jewish heritage they left the poor old crazy bastard alone. Alexander Alekhine Russian born Alexander Alekhine, who spent most of his life in France, Portugal, and Spain, was the fourth world chess champion and widely considered one of the best chess players of all time. Born in 1892 and dying in 1946, by the age of 22 he was one of the strongest chess players in the world. Alec Hine is best known as one of the best attacking players of all time, he penned the famous Alec Hine defense opening, and was and still is widely regarded for his other writings on chess. Alec Hine was also a huge dick. In order to save his own skin, he allegedly became a Nazi sympathizer during the Second World War and wrote anti-Semitic literature in which he claimed Jews played defensive, cowardly chess and the Aryan chess players played attacking chess that was aggressive and brave. After the war, he denied that he wrote the articles, but the manuscripts surfaced later in his own handwriting. He literally drank himself insane. During 1943, he had to be put in a mental hospital. Wilhelm Steinitz, the first world chess champion of the world and one of the greatest players of the 19th century, Wilhelm Steinitz was born in Austria in 1936, later became an American citizen, and died in New York in 1900. He became regarded as the first numero uno in 1866 after beating the competition, and defended his title successfully until 1892. He is known as one of the father of modern chess due to his advancements of positional chess, rather than the all-out crazy attacks of his predecessors. He was also hated by his contemporaries because of his big ego, and because he was both a bad winner and a bad loser. Steinitz apparently once spat on an opponent who pissed him off. However, it should be noted he also formed many lifelong friendships and was as equally friendly with many of his competitors. At the end of his life, he suffered a mental breakdown in and was forced to live in a Moscow nuthouse for 40 days in 1897, where he played chess with the other inmates and inevitably gloated how much better he was than they were. It is suspected the insanity of his later life was caused by syphilis, and he died penniless at the Manhattan State Hospital in 1900. Bobby Fischer There is nothing like leaving the best and craziest of the list for last. Born on March 9, 1943 in Chicago, Robert James Fisher grew up in Brooklyn, New York with his single mother and sister. As a six-year-old, Bobby Fisher and his sister taught themselves how to play chess from the instruction manual of the chess set he got from a local store. After looking unsuccessfully for other kids his age to play with, he joined and was mentored at one of the strongest chess clubs in America, the Manhattan Chess Club, and later attended other famous chess clubs as a young teen. Fisher had innate ability. 
He became an amazing force of nature on the international stage, an undeniable chess talent that took over the world. His extraordinary talent was evident by the time he was an early teenager. In 1956, Fisher defeated international master Donald Byrne in a match at the important Lessing J. Rosenwald Trophy Tournament, and the game was so outstanding a commentator dubbed it, and still considered by many, as the game of the century. Thirteen-year-old Fisher's ability, according to international master and journalist Hans Kamak, showed a stunning masterpiece of combination play performed by a boy of 13 against a formidable opponent, matches the finest on record in the history of chess prodigies. By the time he was two months shy of his 15th birthday, Fisher became the youngest, and still is the youngest, United States national chess champion in history, and earned the title of international master following the victory. He dropped out of high school shortly after at 16, because really, who needs school when you are already the shit? In 2004, Fisher was arrested in Japan for using a revoked United States passport, and nearly extradited back to the US before Iceland took pity on insane former chess great. Iceland's parliament gave him immediate citizenship and he moved there the following year. In one last interest saga in Fisher's chess career, he called into an Icelandic television studio that was broadcasting a live match in order to point out a missed checkmate by one of the players. He died of renal failure in 2008. Bobby Fisher best personifies the fragile line between genius and madness in not only chess grandmasters, but humanity itself. <laughs>